Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com. You know, HBO, Home Box Office, has a unique business model. They arguably have, in fact, in my opinion, they do have the two best fighters in the sport, pound for pound, right? One wins by KO against the reigning welterweight champion. And after the fight, HBO sends Larry Merchant into the ring and Larry Merchant asks him why he hit the then champion after the ref told the fighters to continue fighting. Right then, if you're HBO, you start to ask him why he fought a reigning welterweight champion, right, Victor Ortiz, instead of fighting Manny Pacquiao. Well, yesterday, in line with this very dubious business model, they had the other fighter, who I believe is one of the two best pound for pound in the sport. Now, there he is, fighting an opponent who we know is championship level because German TV thought that he had beaten the then reigning champion Felix Sturm, right? In other words, Matthew Macklin really, to a lot of us, did enough in the ring to have one of the belts. At a minimum, that Sturm fight was razor close. So here you have a championship level guy fighting Sergio Martinez, right? As I've said before, one of the very best pound for pound in the sport. I believe one of the two best. Sergio Martinez is in a close fight. He's losing early. He arguably gets knocked down in the fight. He comes back to win by KO at the end of the 11th. And of course, HBO sends Larry Merchant into the ring. Larry Merchant, after spending all night telling us how unimpressed he was with Sergio Martinez, fair enough, free speech, whatever, right? Um, Larry Merchant comes in the ring and wants to know why Sergio Martinez wasn't able to get the KO earlier, right? Then, of course, in comments, he criticizes Martinez for wanting to fight the best in boxing, Floyd Mayweather. Think about that one. Or Manny Pacquiao, right? And, of course, you can see the quotes. They're written on BoxingScene.com today. He goes further. You know, Martinez, who really is a 154-pounder, and who gained weight to fight Paul Williams at 160, and who is, in my opinion, the best at 160 pounds. The other claimant, I would say, is Dmitry Pirog. Martinez wants to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., because he's the biggest box office at 160 pounds, and he has a belt at 160 pounds. And, of course, Larry Merchant, in his endless nonstop wisdom, criticizes Martinez for wanting to fight Chavez Jr. In other words, Martinez is getting criticized whether he wants to fight Manny Pacquiao or Chavez Jr. Right? Larry Merchant believes that at 37 years of age, Martinez, who has offered to fight guys at 154, right? At one point, he even offered to fight guys at 150. Larry Merchant believes that Sergio Martinez should gain eight pounds, right? Eight pounds. Go from 160 to 168 to fight the guys at 168 pounds, right? Apparently, Larry Merchant doesn't think it's a good idea for Martinez to fight reigning middleweight champion Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who, of course, was the regular champion while Martinez was the super champion. You know, if you didn't know it before last night, 
you certainly know it now. HBO is clearly the Manny Pacquiao and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. channel, right? I just cannot imagine a more curious and more dubious business model than one where after your best fighters win fights by knockout against credible competition, right? Then welterweight champion Victor Ortiz and, um, you know, championship level fighter Matthew Macklin, who just gave Felix Sturm in Sturm's backyard all he could handle and who I'm sure we all realize if that fight was in the United Kingdom would have been scored differently, right? It's only on HBO that you could get the two post-fight interviews by Larry Merchant that you got after those fights. Let me also say too, it was stunning listening to the commentary during this fight. I thought this fight was remarkable, especially early on. Matthew Macklin really fought a real shrewd and smart fight, right? He didn't try to bum rush Sergio Martinez, who admitted after the fight that he was expecting the bum rush. Of course, unfortunately, we got no follow-up questions to that admission from the great interviewer Larry Merchant, right? But Martinez was expecting, and I was expecting, Macklin to come in, try to smother him, try to throw a lot of hooks. Instead, Macklin, who's really a mid-range hooker, right? Macklin is fighting off his back foot because Martinez uses his legs for defense, right? He drops his hands. You throw a punch, he takes a step back, right? Because Martinez uses his legs for defense, I thought Macklin early in this fight is masterfully fainting. He's, he's fainting. He keeps Martinez off balance. He keeps Martinez backing up. Macklin wins many of the early rounds. Macklin also hides his head, and he does it well because he's operating out of a Philly shell, right? He doesn't have his hands up all the time around his head. He actually has one hand across covering his chin, right? He has the other hand like this. He's sticking a shoulder out, and as Martinez throws... Macklin is deftly moving his head all over the place. So Martinez is unable early on to land the straight left, right? Now, of course, rather than talk about the fight, right? Rather than say, wow, Macklin's fighting an inspired fight, doing a lot of great things defensively early, right? Keeping Martinez off balance the middleweight title is hanging in the balance rather than go that route. Instead, HBO went another route where we start hearing that Martinez isn't that good. Merchant, the commentator, starts talking about how he's disappointed that Martinez is not throwing combinations. You know, folks, <laughs> I mean, how many people in boxing throw combinations? Combinations is just, combination punching is just one style of fighting, right? Um, you have many great fighters who didn't throw Sugar Ray Leonard type combinations, right? Not only that, if Martinez is a sharp counterpuncher, and those aren't my words, those are Matthew Macklin's words after the fight. Right? You learn a lot about fighters from their opponents' post-fight comments. If Martinez is a sharp counterpuncher, why would anyone be surprised that he is spending the early rounds figuring out the patterns and figuring out the angles? Don't counterpunchers most of the time start slow? Isn't that the thing with Floyd Mayweather? Think to Floyd's vulnerable moments, getting hit by Shane Mosley, getting hit by Zab Judah, you know, um, getting hit by Ricky Hatton, if you remember that fight. Uh, at one point, he leans up on the ropes. Floyd Mayweather's a counterpuncher. If you think about the difficult moments he's had, many of them have come early in fights. Here you have Sergio Martinez facing a credible threat, right? A guy who many believe already has beaten one of the other champions. 
Why is Larry Merchant surprised that Sergio Martinez is actually taking his time early in this fight trying to figure out an opponent who, quite frankly, is fighting in a way that he hasn't fought before, right? Compare and contrast the first two rounds of this fight with the first two rounds of Macklin against Sturm. Against Sturm, Macklin's up, Macklin's testing, you know, Sturm's ribcage. Here, Macklin is back, Macklin's hiding his head, Macklin's playing angles, right? Macklin's fainting. And so I thought the commentary by Merchant was simply ridiculous. One man's opinion. You know what? Larry's free to voice his opinion. I'm free to voice my opinion on my channel here on YouTube. I thought Merchant was ridiculous all night. Um, I thought the telecast was so ridiculous. At one point, rather than tell us about the fight, we heard that Max Kellerman had tweeted about who's on his pound-for-pound -pound list during the fight and wanted to make sure viewers knew that he placed Martinez not second but fourth below people like Nanito Denaire. You know what? Why don't we watch an artist actually do his craft? If, if there's an excellent fight taking place, why not tell us about the excellent fight? If the challenger is winning many of the early rounds, why not tell us what that challenger is doing to win many of the early rounds? And why not talk openly about what's actually happening in the ring? The only person who seemed to be on their game was Emmanuel Stewart. Unfortunately, Emmanuel Stewart was outnumbered on the broadcasting team. It was Stewart later in the fight who started pointing out that Martinez had made an adjustment and was now able to land the straight left, right? Martinez is a southpaw. It was Stewart who was pointing out that Martinez had figured out where Macklin was going with his head, right? Of course, HBO didn't bother to tell us where that was, right? Viewers had to figure that out. And of course, all we were hearing in the background was, from Merchant in particular, was that uh, Martinez wasn't that good, that Merchant, who seems to be unimpressed with anybody not named Pacquiao or Chavez Jr., just wasn't doing enough in the fight. Let me just point out too that you're interviewing the winner after two dramatic knockdowns in the 11th round. They're dramatic, right? They come at the end of the round. I mean, literally with just a few seconds left at the end of the round, right? You would think that there'd be a question about how he set up the punch or something like that. There's nothing like that. And of course, these two knockdowns are against an opponent with a pretty good chin. Neither knockdown is a flash knockdown. Macklin does look shaken at the end of the round. The ref doesn't stop the fight. Macklin's corner stops the fight. The fight's so close that HBO does show you that Julie Letterman actually had Martinez losing the fight going into the 11th round. Right now, all I could say is with a dramatic conclusion like that to a quality fight, and I mean quality, this was a high quality fight like this. How do you do the post fight interview of one of your two best boxers that Larry Merchant did following this fight? I'm not even going to describe that interview. I thought it was sad. I thought really. It showed that the torch seems to have been passed from HBO's boxing team to the boxing team on Showtime of Tarver, Gus Johnson, and Al Bernstein, right? I just do not know how a great champion wins a close fight the way this champion did yesterday, and you get that post-fight interview, right? And so now... If you go to BoxingScene.com, let me just say this. There's even a quote from Merchant. And someone's going to have to reel in the bias, or Merchant should, seriously, in telecast, just openly turn to the camera and say, you know what? I'm a Manny Pacquiao fan. I'm a Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fan. 
right? I'm biased. So I'm going to ask questions that favor and protect those fighters, right? There's a quote on BoxingScene.com where he literally suggests that Sergio Martinez is being unfair in wanting to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., by the way, a champion in his division, right? As opposed to gaining weight to fight at 168 pounds against guys outside his weight class. Why would he do that? Maybe I'm missing something, right? Maybe I'm missing something. I thought the goal was to be the best in your weight class. I thought it was a good thing when a champion is there calling out other champions in his weight class. You know, then, of course, Merchant goes further. It says that Martinez wants to fight Mayweather and wants to fight Pacquiao, two guys who, by the way, used to be champion at 154 pounds, right? You know, just keep that in, in the back of your mind. They used to be champs at 154 pounds. Merchant laments the fact that Martinez wants to fight them at 154 pounds, right? Because Martinez is willing to fight smaller guys, but he's not willing to fight guys at 168 pounds. Does that even make sense to you? In fact, what people don't realize is that Martinez himself considers his best weight to be 154 pounds. His problem is he's called out fighters like Miguel Cotto. He wants Floyd Mayweather. He can't get the big money fights at his natural weight, so he's already fighting outside his natural weight in fighting at 160 pounds. I know between fights he weighs a lot more. I'm not questioning that. We're talking about fighting weight, not his walking around weight. And so only on HBO can a fighter be criticized for wanting to fight another champ in his division and for wanting to fight two fighters who, forget what I think, the public thinks are the best pound for pound fighters out there. Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather, right? I, I don't know what can be said. Let's hope HBO wakes up and realizes that Sergio Martinez is one of the very best of the sport. He deserves more respect than HBO gave him in the interview at the end of a dramatic win against a quality opponent, right? And let's hope HBO figures out, quite frankly, that Floyd Mayweather is one of the best in the sport and he deserved more respect and consideration than he got after beating Victor Ortiz in that post-fight interview, right? Also, I believe the station loses credibility when they don't insist on Chavez Jr. fighting Sergio Martinez or fighting Dimitri Pirog or fighting Janady Golovkin, right? You're, you're not a champion if you aren't fighting the other great fighters in your division, right? Also, let's hope that the station realizes that a reigning champion like Victor Ortiz and a guy who arguably beat a reigning champion like Matthew Macklin are quality opposition. So after, you know, a Mayweather or a Martinez beats quality opposition, let's not act like that's a small inconsequential occurrence. Okay, let's, let's actually focus on the fight at hand before we start asking why Mayweather's not fighting Manny Pacquiao or why, God forbid, Sergio Martinez actually wants to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Let me know what you think. I'll also say this too. For those of you looking for the blueprint on how to beat Sergio Martinez, right? Of course, there is the loss to Margarito. That's online. But I believe Macklin showed us another way by fighting off your back foot in the first six rounds of this fight. I, you know, blueprints don't have to result in wins, right? I thought Macklin fought inspired at that time. 
Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.